Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing some tracer tips to help you improve as a better tracer player. Before we jump into it guys, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest Overwatch 2 content and for more videos like this one. Bear with me, it is currently half 3 in the morning and I just want to get this video recorded tonight so I can edit it tomorrow and have it up and ready to go. So if I sound a bit tired or I look a bit tired, it's because I am. But yeah, today we are going to be going over some um, going over some tracer tips that I feel like can help you improve as a better tracer. I do find myself playing tracer quite a bit, so I'm just going based on what I do as tracer and what has helped me become a better tracer, and hopefully it helps you guys become a better tracer as well. So let's jump into it. Now, the first tip I want to give is focus the enemy team's back line. You know, flank the enemy team, fight their backline, and pick off their supports. Picking off the supports will ultimately help your team win the fight. It is crucial as a tracer player that you are picking off enemy supports. I would go as far as to say that it is your number one goal as a tracer. You know, what you want to be is you want to be annoying to the enemy team. You want to be something they have to look out for. You know, you want to be in that back line and being as annoying as you can be and picking off enemy supports every single team fight. Because if the enemy team has no supports, they have no heals, they cannot win the team fight. You want to be behind the enemy and you want to be effective while doing so. You know, you want to be sneaky, you want to be unseen until the exact right moment. So you want to be trying to flank enemy backlines and get yourself in a position where you can take out sports. Whilst saying that, you need to be careful of when you are pushing supports. The likes of Anna can put you down on a really well-timed sleep that, or the likes of Zanya or Brig can be a very fierce foe for you to take on. So you want to catch them at the right time. You know, either while they're distracted or on ability cooldowns or during the middle of a fight and they've already taken a bit of damage. Zanya, I I wouldn't be too worried about. It, it just depends on the Zanya player. Um, but Brig can catch up to you very quickly and Anna, if she gets you with a sleep there, you are... you you're very likely dead. You know, you need to be annoying for the enemy team, pretty much. Just annoy them into the depths of hell. Force them to get angry. Rip and tear until it is done. Tip number two is give yourself an escape. Keep a blink available to keep your ass alive, pretty much. You know, you don't want to be blinking into the back line with no way to get out. You know, you don't want to try pick off a Zanya and have no escape just in case all shit goes south. You need that blink ability to stay alive and to pretty much keep being the best annoying little shit I know you can be. Depending on the last tip is just stay alive. Pretty simple. Now I know staying alive is you know is crucial to any character in Overwatch, but staying alive as Tracer gives you a massive advantage over the enemy team. So ways to help with this is choosing to be aggressive at the right moment. You, know, you don't want to be overly aggressive and keep getting yourself killed, but you also don't want to be too passive as to a point where you aren't doing anything. Staying alive in the back line gives the enemy something to worry about. It forces them to choose whether to focus on you or focus on their objective and your team. You know, I'm like cutting in here. I realize I do this a lot and just to talk like this, like keep my hand very close to me. I don't like branch them out. You know? But yeah, pretty much what I mean is it forces the enemy into a situation where they have to fight on both sides of themselves. And if they can't pick you off, it leaves them at a massive disadvantage because they are either focused on you or focused on your team. And if you are getting picks at the same time, you're just going to help your team win that fight. Managing to stay in that back line and being annoying will benefit you and your team more rather than you dying and having to get yourself back to that position over and over again where the enemy team can be on the lookout for you this time. Now, saying all that, that doesn't mean all you do is chill in the enemy's back line. You can engage in team fights, push up with your team, just don't be in that front line of fire. Playing the sides of your team instead of being in the middle. Next tip is getting on to your ultimate. You can pretty much just like a Genji, combo your ult with your tanks or anyone else you feel like it would work well with you know combo with the likes of shatter or you know the best of all that you can combo your pulse bomb with grab 
comboing with a um a grab is massive, especially if they can't do anything to negate the damage put out by pulse bomb. So you know, no shields, no support abilities. If you catch, if your Zarya manages to catch three or four, hell, even two in a grab, chuck your bomb in there. It's an easy win. Fight's over now. Keep in mind, Pulse Bomb is a very fast charging ult. This means it can almost be seen as kind of a throwaway ult. It means you can really just use it on anyone you want. Now mainly you would want to use it on a support, but you know, if you want, throw it on a DPS. Throw it on a tank. Just, I would say, if you are throwing it on a tank, let your team know that, you know, you've thrown your Pulse Bomb on a tank. So that they can support you and help deal the rest of the damage to eliminate the tank. So don't be, you know, worried about using your pulse bomb. Really just go for it. If you feel like you will benefit and get value from sticking your pulse bomb to so someone on the enemy team, do it. Do it to eliminate a support. It's gonna help you in the long run anyway. And as I said, pulse bomb is a very fast charging ult, so you'll have it again in no time. Next thing I will say is learn Tracer's tech. Now what I mean by this is just learn how Tracer works. Learn where Blink can get you. Can it get you onto a high ground on a specific map? Learn how to Blink effectively. Learn how to Blink and aim. You know, what I mean by this is like, say you are 1v1ing a Zenyatta, blinking around him while keeping your aim on him to a point where you are being the most effective you can be. Moving while shooting, you know, dealing damage while also dodging the enemy bullets. Stuff like this can really just make you a better Tracer player if you can move and aim at the same time. Um, one of the ones I learned a while ago, uh, I learned from, I remember watching some Overwatch League player, uh, unfortunately I don't remember who the player is, but what they said is, if you blink and press your ultimate just after you blink, you actually throw your ultimate faster. And it's very good for blinking into someone and as soon as you blink press it and you're more likely to stick your pulse bomb to them. So just little things like that, just try work out little things like that that can ultimately make you just better at playing Tracer. That can help you understand her more. And the last thing I can really think of just going over here is choose your 1v1s wisely. You gotta think about who you can take in the match. If you're facing off against a Cassidy, it's a battle of cooldowns. If he gets a lucky shot on you while he still has his magnetic grenade and you need to recall, you wanna disengage from that fight, you know, until you are ready to take it again. Because if you recall and go back to that fight, all he has to do is hit you with one more shot and stick his grenade on you, and you've ultimately lost that one you won. But if he doesn't have that grenade, let's say he's used it and missed or used it on someone else instead fight him aggressively you know you want to be moving as much as you can you want to making yourself as hard to hit as possible because cassidy deals a lot of damage especially to a tracer because tracer's health is so low and Cass has a high damage output per bullet he can kill you very very easily so yeah fight him aggressively and kill him if he is lacking those abilities Pick the people you feel you can take the best, like a Widow or a poor, unsuspecting Mercy. You know, getting the jump on a Widow is very easy to do damage to her house tracer because she will, as soon as she gets that damage, she's going to panic and she can't do much against you. So Tracer is a very good option for fighting a Widow. Or getting the flank and again some poor unsuspecting Mercy can really just, you know, help your team win fights and ultimately making you a better Tracer player. Yeah, that is all my little tips and tricks for Tracer. Let me know who you guys want to see next. I was planning on doing Genji, but you know, if you guys want to see people who you feel like you want to know how to get better as, let me know and I will do them. If you do enjoy the content I put out, please do consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on you know the latest Overwatch content and more videos like this one. It does help out quite a bit. Make sure you drop a like as well. Check out all my other Overwatch 2 content on the channel. Also check out all my social medias, my TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram and my Kofi. Yeah, that's all I got to say. See ya.